Welcome to St. Louis Park High School and Metro West Conference boys basketball action as the Orioles with a 7-12 record and 2-5 and in the conference take on the Richfield Spartans. I'm John Fromm, we're bringing you the action tonight and we're happy to have the Spartans come, come westward. And here are the starting lineups for Richfield. Rafael Bilal, the gu senior guard, probably the Spartans' best player, averaging 12 a game. And introduced now for St. Louis Park. Number 51, you see, the, excuse me, number 51, Ryan Domris. There's Ryan. And I'll start starting as well for the Spartans. Number 11, there's Xavier Shabazz, after, after, averaging six a game. And here's Jason Keller for the Orioles, 33, big senior, good baseball player as well, averaging four boards a game and six points a game. And coming out, one of the captains for Richfield, number 12, Tommy Fallon. Tommy Fallon, seven a game for the Spartans. And here you see one of the Orioles' best players, number 25, the junior guard who's had a great junior season, Ray Whitlock, sporting number 25. And here's 23 for the Spartans, Antoine White making his first start of the season for Antoine, first game he's played in. And he recently became eligible second semester, so he's really excited. And I know Coach, excuse me, I know Coach Omar McMillan of Richfield happy. And there you see last starter for the Spartans. Number 35, the man in the middle, Marques Brown. Number 35, averaging eight a game with four boards a game. And rounding it out for St. Louis Park. Point guard, one of the senior leaders, Wes Johnson, number three. Orioles are coached to coach by longtime coach Dave Reitenbuecher in his sixth year, assisted by Arsenio Richardson, Jerry Friedis, and Wayne Lott. And for the Spartans, Omar McMillan in his sixth year as the head coach. He's been coaching basketball for over 20 years. Sit back and enjoy this Friday night matchup. Should be a good one. These teams played once already. It was a St. Louis Park 89-79 win at Richfield. As we mentioned the teams with similar records in the Metro West Conference. St. Louis Park 2-5 and five on the year. Coming off a great win on Wednesday night as the Orioles imposed their will on South St. Paul, taking the Packers out 76-65. Richfield, unfortunately, had a rough game against uh, Edina, losing 82-44, a good Edina club. Ready to take the tap for St. Louis Park tonight. Here's Nick Chos. Nick's going to take the jump for St. Louis Park. And number 35, Marques Brown for the Spartans. Marques and Chos battle, and Chos able to get that in a quick early foul already, I believe. Absolutely whistled here. Our officials tonight at Steve Sensor, Tom Hudson, and Mark Anvil on the call. Inbounded by the Spartans. Orioles going to come out in a, uh, looks like a man-to-man -man defense, something Coach Breitenbucher likes to utilize a lot. The top of the key, Spartans passing the ball around. Bilal, here is Xavier Shabazz. Shabazz dishes it over into the corner. Marques Brown out to the top of the key as they work it around the perimeter. Orioles with a tough, relentless man-to-man. -to -man. There's a nice cut towards the hoop. And Antoine White had an opportunity to lay one in there working around the perimeter as well. Nice drive to the dish and a nice block by Chose there. Partial block, oh, Richfield gonna reset the offense and a big open drive in the middle and nobody home there for St. Louis Park and a nice follow by Marques Brown as he gets a deuce there. Easy drive for Xavier Shabazz as the, he kind of parted the sea with an open drive. Orioles on a quick breakdown and they fire up a quick shot as Ray Whitlock misses there from 14 feet. We mentioned both these teams newly acquainted in the Metro West Conference. They were in the Lake Conference forever. Has a nice jump in and a steal, and the Orioles with a two-on-one break. And a nice finish that time by Whitlock, and, a, and he's going to get a defense, or excuse me, a blocking call is going to be car charged on the Spartans, number 12, Tommy Fallon. And you see a look at Whitlock. I thought Fallon possibly had good position there, but indeed it is going to be on... Uh, it is going to be on Fallon, and that's a nice break for St. Louis Park and Whitlock, who's had a great junior season, coming in uh, averaging 17.7 a game for the Orioles. Coach Breitenbucher had a lot of positive things to say about Ray, and Ray misses the shot, but it's going to come right back to him here. Ray works it down low, and a nice finish that time by Ryan Domers. Domers with a nice finish, and the Spartans going to throw it wild and as they try to break it down, and. Orioles with a 4-2 advantage early on here. 
Richfield going to come out in a full court press here. Just kind of token pressure so far as Wes Johnson going to walk it on up on Rafael Bilal. Bilal probably the best Spartan player, number two there, leading scorer for them. Take a look at him, and that should be a matchup to watch with Johnson against Bilal. Orioles working across the outside, and here's a nice shot and a nice opportunity to trifecta for Ray Whitlock, but it goes away. Bilal on the break there. Number two going to work it over to Fallon. Fallon has Marques Brown out there, and here is Shabazz, 11, with the drive. Hits the free throw line from 15, but a nice follow on his own miss, and he follows and gets a foul called. So nicely done for Xavier Shabazz, who missed the 12, 15-footer uh, there. Hits hard off the iron, and then he follows aggressively, goes up to the board, and St. Louis Park, I believe that was on, I think that was on uh, St. Louis Park's number 51, Ryan Domrez. Little confusion over there. Yes, indeed it was. So his first on Ryan. Shabazz. Shabazz or Shabazz. He's probably he's the best free throw shooter for Richfield. That's 71%. Averaging six a game. And he gets him gets the gets the shooter's roll there. A little flat on that opportunity. I'm sure Coach, I'm sure Coach McMillan likes to see a little more arc on that, but nice finish there. He just joined us just underway here at St. Louis Park High School. Shabazz going to miss a second one and looked like Fallon as well. Oh, Fallon and, and Domrez were battling there. It does go off off Domrez and Fallon's going to throw it in under the glass. Oh, quick entry pass, a nicely done and a nice dish. And Marquez Brown gets his second hoop of the game. So Brown with four points already. He got a nice entry pass by Fallon there who really executed that beautifully. Richfield in a man-to-man -man as well. Entry pass down low and another nice play by Marques Brown as he over-pursued and got a nice left hand on the entry pass there in the Damres. Shabazz with a pull-up from 14, not really square on the approach there. Orioles going to break it out, and here is Jason Keller from 14. Comes up a little short on the front iron there. And the Spartans going to break it down again with Bilal. Bilal into the corner here for Shabazz. Bilal, 12 a game for the Spartans as he comes at it from the shooting guard slash point guard spot. They'll rotate him through a lot, and here is White. Antoine White carries it. Thought he almost got caught on the hip there as the Orioles played some good defense on him with Jason Keller. But he finishes there, and indeed that's going to push going to push it up to 7-4 uh, to four in favor of the Spartans. So an early nice lead for them. And as we mentioned, they've had a, a rough go of it with a 2-17 and 17 record. So any kind of early momentum's really got to help. Duck under movement, nicely done by Ryan Domres as he took his man and, and really saddled him up on the hip. He faked right and went left and finished. A nice finish for Domres. Shabazz on the near side here as he works down low. Nice cross court pass. Hits Shabazz on the. Belial. Oh, Belial has that pass stolen away by Keller. Keller one on one. He's going to go for the high runner. Not able to finish with six feet. Was partially harassed that time by Belial. Thrown down low and Marques Brown. Entry pass again stolen by Jason Keller. So that's two steals in a row for Keller, the senior. He's a big board man for Park and he, oh, and he's gonna, unfortunately for St. Louis Park, he's gonna get whistled on an offensive foul as Ryan Domrez. And I believe that's Ryan's second fall. We'll have to take a look officially here. Looks like he's gonna make his way over to the bench and indeed St. Louis Park gonna sub in here as Aaron Zheng gonna get going to get his first action of the game for the 6'5 junior. One of the advantages I really think St. Louis Park should have in this game, they've got a lot more bulk and size and rebounding advantage should be theirs as Dome Rays at 6'4", Zhang at 6'5", and Lynch at 6'5". Those are two sophomores and a junior for Park, and all of them have seen extended minutes this year at the power forward slash center spot for the Orioles. And Richfield, as we mentioned, uh, they've got Marques Brown, who we've seen twice, the 6'3 junior, probably the biggest interior threat for the Spartans. They also play a young man by the name of Davis Miles, who's 6'3, but otherwise, they're pretty much 6'1 and under. So, Coach McMillan uh, having to operate with a, with a relatively large bench. I was amazed in talking to Coach McMillan that they've started 12 different players this year, I believe, and he's 18 different guys have got varsity minutes so far for the Spartans. So uh, I'm not sure what the future holds, but they are, do have quite a few young players with only, I guess they've got eight on the varsity that are seniors for the Orioles, of course, as you've seen during the year, two, three seniors in the starting lineup. And usually running an eight-man, eight, eight or nine-man rotation 
see Mikhail Howard out there sometimes, Aaron Jang, Josiah Morrow, as well as Jack Lynch defensively. Take a look here, see if we any substitutions have entered the game. And indeed they have. Number 13, Junior Stone with the ball here in for, in for the Spartans. Here's Junior running at the top of the key there. He's going to give it off to Belial. Belial with speed, gives it back to Stone. Stone with the five-foot runner. Going to miss hard off the glass, but a nice follow that time by one of the new players who entered the game. I believe that's number 25. Davis Miles, who we just talked about. Davis Miles, a little over pursuit there, but good follow. So Davis Miles makes his present felt early. Pushes the score to nine to six in favor of the Spartans. Orioles running some motion offense here. Here's Keller, top of the key, has it hit off his foot. And then an errant pass is stolen away by Stone. Stone gonna finish with the right hand there. Ooh, and he makes hard contact. Falls really, really roughly to the ground there. Orioles are gonna get a, another foul whistled here as I believe that's on, I believe on St. Louis Park that's gonna be, I'll have to take a look here. I didn't see officially who the call's on. Oh, it was going to be whistled on Jason Keller, just Jason's Stone first shot. And here is Stone. Stone on the year. Averaging nine and a half a game. Hasn't he's kind of an instant offense. They kind of he's kind of like the microwave, if you remember Vinnie Johnson and the Detroit Pistons back in the 80s. Nine and a half a game, 58% from the free throw line. And that's been one of the big bugaboos for the Spartans is foul shooting this whole year. Only 52% on the whole year, 52% of the year from the foul line. But he does hit one of two there and push the Spartan lead to four points here. Long entry passes, the Orioles gonna break it down. Nicely done and an even better partial block this time by the Spartans. Here is Aaron Jing going with the up and under move and he does get a call whistled on him as Aaron used the old Kevin McHale up and under move and is gonna get a Foul whistle, I believe, on 35, Marques Brown. Looks like it is. We're gonna have a couple more subs enter the game for Richfield here. It looks like Tommy Fallon gonna make his way back in the game. And here is Aaron Jing, the 6'5", junior center, averaging 5.2 a game. Aaron has it hit hard off the iron there. Aaron had a, uh, Aaron had a really nice game on Wednesday night. As we mentioned, the Orioles took took South St. Paul and really disposed of them nicely. Aaron popped in 12 on Wednesday. And his counterpart, the big man Ryan Domres, also had, excuse me, also had 14 as the Orioles really worked their magic in the interior here. Top of the key as well, Woods here. Another substitute in for the Spartans is here's Antoine Maddox, number five in the game. Maddox tries to set a pick. Woods with a runner from 14 over the outstretched arms of Jason Killer. And indeed, he gets it there. So nicely done for Stone. Oh, and here's a oh, an, an opportunity for a ball hawking play by Antoine Maddox. He's got, he started 17 games on the season, didn't start tonight, which was a, a change in pace as oh, Coach Richardson, I think, wanted some energy and speed and uh, a real floor general to uh, help run the press for the Spartans. So Belisle and Maddox will defensively put some token pressure here on the Orioles. And here is Ray Whitlock with the, as he goes behind the back. Orioles gonna run a little motion offense at the top of the key here. And here for St. Louis Park, Mikhail Howard in the game, number five, we should mention. He's had a great sophomore season for the Orioles. Mikhail being guarded, excuse me, being guarded tightly by Maddox. And here is Whitlock being harassed by Belisle again. Ray Whitlock going with the left hand. Not a lot of room there, but he goes on the duck and up, up and under move and is able to bank it nicely off the glass there. So nicely done by Ray Whitlock as he gets it over the outstretched arms of Tommy Fallon and pushes the game back to 12-9 in favor of the Spartans. Friday night action here in the Metro West Conference as these two who were conference rivals for a long time now in the same conference. Belial with the left hand jumper from 14, gonna miss. Orioles with the board and they're gonna break it out here. St. Louis Park with Nick Chose who receives the pass. He's stopped on the baseline. Gonna hit it into Aaron Jang and oh, he, Jang gets a break there because he gets an unmolested layup with the left hand there as it looked like, uh, it looked like Antoine White slipped out of the way, or excuse me, Tommy Fallon slipped out of the way. Belial with a nice crossover move, nice left hand dish on the left side here. 20 footer from three point range goes nowhere. 
as unfortunately Junior Stone not able to finish and a beautiful drive by Mikhail Howard. And the 6-1 sophomore guard who's averaging eight a game goes beautifully with the left hand runner there. Maddox, Orioles still. Oh, they're gonna get her saddled on a reach in foul here. I believe is Jason Keller gonna get, gonna be the young man who committed the foul. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. That's yeah. It is for a second they had they had uh, Howard's name up there, but it was not on Howard. So Orioles gonna zone off the inbounds play up to the top of the key. Top of the key as well here for the Spartans and Junior Stone gonna work the left hand dribble on the top. Left hand he goes across off a nice pick set by Brown from 17. Here is a beautiful finish here by 23. Antoine White, we just mentioned the senior White. Whitlock again being harassed this time. Whitlock strong drive, see if he's got an angle and he misses on the, the layup there as he was going against two Spartans and Spartan's gonna counter offensively with a nice drive and oh, an even better block that time. Beautifully done by St. Louis Park's Nick Chost as he puts the facial on one of the Spartans players. I believe that was uh, Marques Brown who went up for the deuce. And Omar McMillan really, really fiery on the sideline as he's letting some of the Spartan players know exactly what he thinks here. There's a beautiful block and Aaron Jang involved with that block as well. And actually Marques Brown tried to finish in. Uh, was a young man who wasn't able to do so on the follow that time. And Antonio Maddox is the young man who had his shot blocked by two Orioles there. Off of a nice curl play, the Orioles still running some motion, left, right, down low, up and under, duck move, and a nice follow on a missed shot as well that time, and nicely done. Nicely done for St. Louis Park by number 35, Josiah Morrow. We just mentioned him as well, the sophomore Morrow, getting more and more minutes. Averaging seven and a half a game, and he does a nice job following his missed shot there. Brown gonna push it out top of the key. 18 footer is an air ball, and unfortunately for the Spartans, Antoine White's shot went nowhere. Ooh, foul gonna be whistled on the Spartans, number 13, Junior Stone, as the Orioles, number five, Mike Mikhail Howard, had a nice angle on the drive there, and there you see a nice replay here. As the ball goes spinning around the top of the key, and even though he was square to the hoop from 20 feet, Antoine White came up empty in his pursuit of a 20-footer there. Some nice, nice finish on the free throw by Michael Howard there. He's also a young man that can give up the rock a lot. One and a half assists a game. And as we mentioned, a uh, bright future for uh, he as well as Morrow and, and Ryan Domrez in that sophomore class. They're all three sophomores getting a lot of minutes in the eight-man rotation. I'll be back for Coach Brighton Bucher next year. Both teams still running pretty much a straight man to man. Dribble drive penetration, he's able, excuse me, and indeed Junior Stone was able to get some penetration, but Ray Whitlock gonna carry it up as he walks it across the timeline here. A little stop and go move for Whitlock, and he gives it up that time and a little mishandle to the ball on the weak side there as indeed uh, Josiah Morrow not able to get a handle on that. So Josiah, Orioles are gonna sit Ray Whitlock down momentarily here, and they've got a new young man in the game. It looks like, I think that might be Jack Lynch in the game. I'm not sure if that is, no, I apologize. Back in the game is 21, Nicholas Chose, and here is Chose, goes up for the rebound, not able to get a hand on it as he and White battled for it. They're gonna say it went off, Nicholas. And looks like the Spartans gonna inbound underneath the hoop as one of their new players, Xavier, Xavier, Xavier Tucker Shabazz, who's in the starting lineup back in the game. Shabazz gonna work it out to the top. Pass around the... Cross court pass. Offensively, the Orioles pressuring with Wes Johnson. Johnson, top of the key, gets those hands up. Nice ball rotation as the ball pushed into the corner and a beautiful move on the left side there by Rafael Bilal as he beat Aaron Jing on the baseline. Nobody home though, and we're gonna have a turnover down low and the Orioles ball back here at the 841 mark. 17-15 Park it was down early, but they've come back here to take the advantage here and indeed getting some nice bench play are each team. Little pressure. 
Oh, and unfortunately for Howard that time, he tried to use the left hand to create some space where before he could give up the right hand dish, and he wasn't able to find a teammate there, as indeed he was looking for Wes Johnson, I believe. So Howard pressuring Bilal at the top of the key here. Over on the weak side here, and here is Kishan Lewis also in the game. Lewis gives it up to Shabazz, back top of the key to White. White with the dish to Bilal, takes the left-handed trifecta, and indeed first three-pointer of the game, and Rafael Bilal, who averages 12 a game, squared himself out nicely and high rise right over the Oriole defender. Cross-court operation, Bilal with another clean seal again, 2-1-1 for the Spartans, but oh, he's gonna get saddled for carrying the basketball. So a nice clean steal for Belial, who's got many steals and assists on the year. Also one of the best players. And here you look as they cross court the ball here. Ball's gonna be a nice little bit of penetration and Bilal was squared up at the three point line and even though Michael Howard closed on him, he was able to square up the three pointer and knock it down. A Little bit of token pressure here. Oh, a possible push there at time for St. Louis Park but nothing called. And now we're gonna get a foul called on, and it looks indeed like Nick Chose is gonna get sent to the foul line here. There you see the Orioles curled. I thought he might have maybe potentially. And you see the foul whistled on Shabazz. I believe that's his first. So Shabazz got the hand up there, and Nick Chose going to the line. Chose, the senior, averaging 12 and a half a game. Big rebounder with a 6-4 frame. Five boards a game for the Orioles. Been a big cog in the Orioles' success the last last year and the wins they've had this year. Misses the first. Orioles also have Jack Lynch now in the game, 43. Take a look for Jack Lynch. They're also a part of that big sophomore class that's been getting more and more work as we go. Jack is a 6'4", young man. Belisle. Tries to beat Howard with a left hand crossover, and he does cross over, goes to his left hand. And as a, you know, a lot of times you don't see a lot of left-handed point guards or left-handed penetrators with that kind of wheels. So be interested defensively how Coach Bright Buker plays up against, excuse me, plays up against Bilal and if, if he tries to get him to force to go to the right hand. And I assume we might overplay a little defensively to get him to switch off there, and Bilal gonna hit his first one. Foul was on Howard his first for St. Louis Park, and a couple more subs coming in the game for Richfield. And back in the game, number 12, Tommy Fallon, and I believe that's number five, Antonio Maddox, back in the game for the Spartans. We're squared up at 19 here. Stick with us here at Metro West Conference Basketball. Orioles and Richfield renewing an old rivalry from their late conference days that dates back all the way into the 30s. So here's Howard, nice drive, give up, and a beautiful assist that time, and a nice finish by Jack Lynch. So the sophomores work it together, and Howard gives it up to Lynch for a clean finish. A nice square up on the trifecta that time, and Junior Stone finishes cleanly. And the Orioles looking for a fast break opportunity, and Howard was trying to find his teammate Lynch there, but he shot it over his head. So looks like the Orioles are gonna make another substitution here, and indeed Ray Whitlock back in the game for St. Louis Park. Whitlock out there along with Chose and Howard. We mentioned uh, Jack Lynch in the game along with Wes Johnson still. Howard still on Bilal. Bilal going the right hand this time. We'll see how he handles the right hand drive. He does give it up and another long three point attempt. This one hard off the glass. Nice board by Howard. Nice give up that time to Ray Whitlock and the Orioles are gonna break it over the timeline here. Michael Howard goes right hand, 15, and he's got it. Howard the sophomore with a clean finish, maybe from 12. Ooh, and a nice step up by Whitlock, but he misses his man, and a nice crossover move as he goes behind his back. Belial with a beautiful spin move in the corner. Nice give up that time, and I believe that was 23. Antoine White that missed the shot. A little fast break for St. Louis Park. They're gonna follow. Whitlock tries to follow his miss. And he, Whitlock with a clean steal from Belial and a nice give up by Ray, and he gives it up to Nick Chose and a nice assist that time as he followed his own shot, missed it, and even though Belial got the ball, he didn't give up and stole it right away from him. Once again, I'm John Fromm, happy to be with you for St. Louis Park Boys Basketball tonight on this Friday evening. And there you see the sequence and a nice, nice shot by uh, Kurt, our cameraman, who's working solo duty tonight. He's... Uh, Saw Richfield hockey last night and Richfield basketball tonight against St. Louis Park. So, ooh, almost a steal off the inbounds play that time. 
And Junior Stone going to run things at the top of the circle there. He gives it up to White. Stone, who's made one three and missed another. Oh, a nice give up that time as he, he had a young man by the name of Davis Miles flashing down from the free throw line through the lane, and he found him nicely. But the ball, he was fouled in his attempt to uh, pursue the hoop, and the Orioles, it looks like Ray Whitlock's going to get saddled with that one. So Whitlock saddled with his first foul. Nobody really in too much a foul trouble for the Orioles. And for and Davis Miles, the 6'3 sophomore center, flash forward and makes his shot. A couple more substitutions, excuse me, for the Antonio Maddox does come back in the game. And we'll see here Davis Miles from 15. Orioles with the board. And they do have a substitution in the game for St. Louis Park as well. And Orioles are going to be saddled with an offensive foul. I believe that was number one. And I'm not sure, don't have his number anywhere on what I have. I'll try to get a number for you. But number one, he's at the bottom of the, uh, the bottom of your screen there. Red-haired young man. Try to get a name for him later if I can. Might be Connor Cornell, I'm not sure. But anyway, back to live action. Five and a half to go here in the first half. Maddox squared up defensively by Whitlock. Oh, excuse me. And here's a nice step up by Lynch. Lynch one on two. He's going to try to finish and with that long right outstretched arm. He goes high off the glass and beats a, a young defender by the name of Mr. Maddox who went, excuse me, Mr. Uh, Junior Stone, who tried to go high for the block, but beautifully done by the sophomore Lynch. That's beautiful to see Lynch finish like that for St. Louis Park. Here is Jack. Jack with the finish. So he finishes the three-point play, beautifully done. And uh, looks like Ray Whitlock going to take a momentary seat here as the Orioles are trying to work some of the different young men in the game and keep that rotation working good. Here's Belial again, going to walk it up against Howard. Howard back in the game defensively for Park. Little give up to Maddox on the weak side here. Right in front of us, Maddox tries to curl off the pass he made. A little dribble drive penetration that time, and a, an errant pass goes nowhere, and the Orioles are going to run it back. A little three-on-two situation here. Oh, but a nice play by Belial. Able to get a piece of that and get the steal off of Wes Johnson. Maddox with a give to Belial. He'll walk it back to the top of the circle. And looks like we're going to have another traveling violation. This one on Junior Stone. So Omar McMillan trying to calm his Spartans down. As we mentioned, uh, Richfield 2 and 17 on the year. Orioles 7 and 12. But these teams had a Orioles had a 10 point win the last time they met in Richfield. And you know this is a game that both teams really want in the conference. The Orioles want to push their home their conference record up to three and five. And here's the give. I think that's Cornell give up this time to Wes Johnson. Orioles went in some motion offense and a left hand. You don't often see that as Nick Schultz finishes with the left hand even though he was driving on the right side of the hoop. He almost had to go behind his head to finish that layup. So nicely done. It'll push the Oriole lead to, to six points here with three, four and a half to go in the first half. Nice defensive help that time. I believe that's by Cornell as the Orioles had three and a good follow and Belial gets the dish and finishes the three-pointer to add to his point total for Rafael. The senior 5'10 guard. Howard and Belial going against each other as well. Johnson being harassed on the offensive side. Howard being patient. He goes with the right hand and he does finish. He beat Belial cleanly. That was nice to see for the sophomore and another hoop. Ooh. I'm not sure if, if Wes Johnson got a hand on that, but nothing going here for Antoine White on his shot from the baseline. And the Orioles are going to continue to work things here. Orioles have pushed it to five points. And a little follow misses that time. Good defensive pressure by St. Louis Park. And I don't know, number one, beautifully done for St. Louis Park as he followed, he pursued that beautifully, forced an erroneous pass, and the Orioles with a nice steal again. Howard, top of the circle, or defensively, little switch for the Spartans. 
As an entry pass beautifully done to Lynch and nicely done as Nick Chose gets it into Lynch and they high five each other as they work their way back. Beautifully done. Stick with us for a moment here. I'm gonna get a read on who number one is for St. Louis Park as the Orioles move their lead to seven points. There you see a nice follow, nice left-hand entry pass and a beautiful left-hand finish by Lynch. Okay, thank you. Apologize for that. It's Tommy Burnett, number one, not listed on the program, but I know he's a good athlete. And I believe he's a good golfer as well. I might be mistaken, but that Burnett name, very famous around the high school here. So nice sequence by Tommy Burnett who entered the game here. Don't know what kind of work Tommy had had. As you see, you look at the Belial three-pointer there from the corner. Nicely done again. Good replay work and direction by Paul Broden in the truck. I know Paul loves to have the uh, replay capability. Sure helps a lot. So yeah, for Tommy Burnett, I should mention he'd only played in five games. So Coach Breitbucher, apologize fans, but Coach Breitbucher did not give me his name and he was not listed currently on the program. So Tommy Burnett, seven points on the season, but nicely done, and uh, he had a couple good defensive plays for Park, so. Got to find out what grade Tommy's in here. I'll go online and get some information as we break. With 2.45 remaining, Belial gonna walk it up for the Spartans. It's the midcourt stripe. Nice right-hand entry pass down low. Nothing doing as Brown was stopped from 15, but a good follow there as Brown gave it up, gave up the rock, and Kashawn Lewis follows here. St. Louis Park with a potential break. A nice stop and go move and a three, uh, 180 move is done by Jason Keller who finishes. Park takes it back to six again as teams trade baskets. Wes Johnson defensively as it's three on three here. Lewis on being guarded tightly by Wes Johnson. Johnson square to Lewis here. Lewis with the give up to Shabazz. Shabazz works it over to Tommy Fallon. Fallon, right hand dribble, top of the arc. Give up sequence and here is, here is a three pointer attempted by Kashawn Lewis. Nothing, nobody home but Fallon follows. Ooh, good defense that time by Howard as well as Keller. And the Orioles are able to steal that ball away and force a uh, bad entry pass that time by Fallon. So. Park will try to build on their six point lead here with 144 remaining. Tommy Burnett gives it up that time to Keller. And unfortunately for the Orioles, a turnover looked like we had a traveling call whistled on Wes Johnson. <laughs> Orioles not gonna have another home game till, uh, excuse me, till I believe February 6th next Friday. We'll get over that during the break. Oh, a nice stop and go move, and Belial tries to beat Howard, and then I believe Mr. Howard says, not so fast. You might be the big gun in the Spartan attack, but I'm gonna dispose of that. So beautifully done, and Belial's got great wheels there. Let's watch this sequence again. Howard squared up to Belial. Belial, left hand backs him down, and then goes right by him with the left hand, and it was from behind, I believe. Howard got a hand on that, so nicely done. And here is Howard again. to. 15 footer on the pull up, a little hard off the iron, but a beautiful takeaway by Lynch. He's already got four, nice give back, and a beautiful offensive board by Lynch as he beats Marquez Brown under the dish, and that's something that's been an issue for the Spartans. As you see, number 12, Fallon has it stolen right away by Lynch. And Lynch with the good give down to sophomore teammate Howard, and Howard back to the line again, so. The sophomore connection working it for St. Louis Park and Coach Breitenbucher uh, got to be happy with what he's seen out of his underclassmen tonight, as well as his older players. So he misses the first and back in the game, excuse me, back in the game, number 25, Davis Miles for Richfield. Miles in again, as well as Antoine White. We mentioned 18 players have seen varsity minutes and they've got 12 to 13 guys that regularly rotate through. So Omar McMillan will reach into his bag often to see what he can pull out of there. Left hand dribble, top of the circle. Junior Stone with a give back here. He's got it to Lewis. Lewis works it over to Junior Stone. Stone left hand dribble. 
Nice picks at that time, but nothing doing offensively as Lewis wasn't able to finish. Right hand dribble into the corner, the give up to White. White works it and is pinned down on the baseline, but a nice give up that time. As the Orioles playing great defense here with just 35 seconds remaining. Fallon from 18 with the three pointer, goes high off the board and Howard with a high rebound. Michael Howard with a give up to Burnett. Burnett, nice, nice 15 foot pass and a nice opportunity by Jason Keller goes awry. And with 20 seconds remaining, a little two on two for the Spartans and a wild out of control drive that time. And fortunately for Richfield, they're gonna maintain possession as, as Antoine White, I don't know if we have the replay of that, but it was, was really wild on his drive down there. Nicely done by Tommy Burnett as he's gonna be sent to the bench, but a few good minutes of Yeoman's work and he's gonna be relieved this time by Josiah Morrow back in the game for Park as well as Nick Chose who just sat momentarily. Marquise Brown in the game again, the center. There's a lot of responsibilities and with just 16 seconds remaining, Coach McMillan wanting to get his best player, Rafael Bilal, in the game. Bilal, not only a good three-point shooter, as he's shooting 38% from the three-point line, but getting recruited by a couple of local colleges, but Bilal's air pass almost stolen clean by Howard, but Brown gonna get it down loud, goes up with a head fake, gets some space created, and, and finishes with 10 seconds remaining. Orioles with inside five seconds. Howard with the ball from 30. Howard, oh, I thought he had the right distance, just a little offline. So a little bad break for St. Louis Park as they had a potential on a, a steal play as Bilal actually made a, an errant pass, but Howard couldn't go clean with it. And then he was able to work the ball back and St. Louis Park pushes it to a five point halftime lead here. Once again, it's uh, conference basketball. The Orioles seven and 12 on the season, two and five in the conference. And nice to uh, nice for Tommy Burnett to get some action as the Orioles have had a number of young men that have played so far. We'll officially get the stats a little later, but we're going to step away momentarily here on Park 16. Make sure you keep with us here as we've got a good one here at St. Louis Park High School. Orioles 37, Spartans 32. Mom was diagnosed with Alzheimer's at 58 years old. For me, it was heart-wrenching. It takes a toll on everyone. I mean, it's a depressing disease to watch unfold before your eyes. You just don't see this, the, the person's soul is like gone. This disease just ravages a family. It changes your life. The magnitude of it is indescribable. Now is the moment. If we work together, we can stop this epidemic. Contact Bright Focus and learn more. We are back at St. Louis Park High School, 37-32, an Oriole advantage. St. Louis looks like both teams gonna return their starting lineups to start the second half. Spartan, or excuse me, Oriole ball. Had a nice chance to visit with uh, newly inducted Hall of Famer in the St. Louis Park Athletic Hall of Fame. And uh, it was really a nice time to go over there and talk to Ira Gerwitz, is who I'm referring to, Ira telling me that uh, he had just got the information and want to make sure to mention that assistant coach Arsenio Richardson, a great basketball player and now an assistant coach. is all right. Also one of the newly enshrined players in the 2015 Hall of Fame class. So some good names, former principal Dick Wainio on that list. So it'll be a banquet in early September. So off the old St. Louis Park just passing it around the exterior. On the outside here as they work it around. Orioles, five point advantage to start the second half. That three point attempt, nobody home that time, but a nice follow that time, beautifully done. Ryan Domres add to his point total. He had four in the first half, that takes him up to six. Orioles leading scorer, not really a surprise. Mr. Michael Howard with nine points in the first half for Park. And Belial leading Richfield with eight. Work down in the corner, here's Brown. Brown had six in the first half. Little give up play. Nice dribble drive by Fallon, and Fallon gets his first hoop of the game for Richfield. Wes Johnson gonna walk it up, right hand dribble. Diagonal pass works its way over to Ray Whitlock. Whitlock and Johnson play and catch. Johnson guarded by Belisle. 
Orioles can tend to work some clock here, try to maybe wear down the Spartans a little bit or see if they can get anything inside. We're not flashing at the top of the free throw line is Nick Chos. Chos gonna work down, work down the, oh, a nice give up by, nicely done and a nice follow that time as Wes Johnson with a nice give up and I believe that was Nick Chos who follows with the tip in. So Chos adds to his total. Belisle, nice dribble drive penetration. 16 footer from the corner just to two but that, that's the second and third points of the game for Mr. Xavier Shabazz. So Shabazz. I know there's a Shabazz Muhammad with the Timberwolves, no relation. Penetration as well that time and a good follow, but oh, break for Brown. He's being pursued. Oh, nice stop and go move as he was really being pursued uh, on the defensive side. It looked like Mr. Domres was gonna maybe make a block there, but Brown, what nice big swing play there as it cuts it to three for St. Louis Parker's advantage. And a missed three this time by Ray Whitlock. Orioles gonna get the long board. Wes Johnson working it outside to a flash play. Down low, left hand off the glass. Nobody home but Domres with the follow and he's gonna finish. Nice cross court entry pass. It looked like from Jason Keller that time. And uh, Domres, Keller worked it over to Nick Chos who missed it. But a nice follow by Domres. Shabazz works it on the... Oh, an up and under move and nothing but the bottom of the iron that time and he was really bailed out. Indeed was number 23, Antoine White. St. Louis Park gonna be saddled with the foul here and White gonna be sent to the free throw line. There you see a beautiful Chose entry pass and a nice left hand opportunity. Nobody home there from Chose after he got the foul. But a good job by Domre is able to tip it in there. Now we've mentioned too that uh, I mentioned that free throw has been a big bugaboo for the Spartans. Only 52% on the year for Omar McMillan, the uh, in his fifth year as the head coach at Richfield. He played college ball, by the way, at Saint Scholastica. Nice follow and finish that time on the form that Antoine White has. White going to work his way to the sideline and another entry as here is Junior Stone returning. Stone was the second leading scorer for Richfield in the first half with six points. Quickly mentioned that Antoine White had, uh, excuse me, Antoine White had five, and also da -da 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 -da, number three, Kashawn Lewis with three. Howard works it over to his soft, works it over to his sophomore teammate, Josiah. Howard, top of the, Top of the line again, we mentioned nine points in the first half. Playing catch on the exterior here. Howard working at the top of the umbrella. Nice give up on a three point attempt and nobody home there. Ball peels out of bounds and for St. Louis Park, J Josiah Morrow missed the three there. Morrow gonna throw the inbound pass here as it looks like number, it looks like 35, Marques Brown gonna work his way to the bench. Running the offense from his point guard slot, the sophomore Howard over to, over to Whitlock. Whitlock entry pass here to Chose. Chose to the give up tomorrow. Backdoor play, turnaround jumper from 12, nobody home. Nice extension and great loft with Junior Stone on the rebound. He works it over to Tommy Fallon. Fallon back to Stone, over to Belial. Shabazz being guarded by Josiah Morrow. Josiah sporting the nice orange skips. Davis Miles also in there for the Spartans as they continue their free substitution pattern. Just a four point margin here. Oh, a nice defensive play that time by Morrow with getting help from Howard. The Orioles on the break this time. Looks like, oh, and it looks like St. Louis Park's number 25, excuse me, uh, Ray Whitlock with a nice job driving to the rack, but he was a little out of control and he was bailed out at the end. A little foul defensively, I believe that was on number 21. Excuse me, number 21 for the Spartans. 
which I did not have a name, and he's flashed his way out of the game. So, all right, Whitlock over to Morrow. Morrow down on the baseline. Entry pass, nicely done by Chose as he gets it to Domris. Domris, nobody home there. Oh, and Howard with a nice step up and another steal. Howard give up to Ray Whitlock. Ray with the finish. Beautifully done by the sophomore Howard and the junior, Way Whitlock. Give up as well, and here's Stone again from another three-pointer. And Junior Stone with his second three-pointer, and he adds to his eight points of the game. So good sequence by Howard and the Orioles. Nice give up here again is Ray Whitlock from about 14, 15 feet. Nobody home. Bilal with a nice long cross-court pass to Junior Stone. Stone wisely pulls it back out. He's going to launch another three where Brown going to get the rebound and, and work it over to Fallon. Top of the keel, Bilal being harassed by Whitlock defensively. Stone again to the give up to Fallon. Fallon and Stone. Here's Fallon, the senior captain. High, oh, a little high runner there from about six feet. A really difficult shot. And Tommy Fallon gets it to fall. And that's going to put us at 45 44. So both teams are certainly going to have to strap it down. The Spartan bench has risen up fully. Everybody's standing on the Richfield bench. Let's see here. The momentum is broken a little early here in the second half. You can imagine the Spartans with only two wins on the season really fired up. Oh, it looked like, I, I don't know if that was a, I don't know if that was a uh, entry pass for a possible dunk opportunity or if indeed Josiah Morrow shot that. It was almost a set shot. I don't know if you have the replay of that, Paul. I was not sure if he was trying to pass that or shoot that, but this will give the Spartans a chance to, to go ahead for the first time since early in the first half. And Bilal going to walk it up on Howard here. Just 12 minutes remaining in the second period here, second half. Seven foot shot and a beautiful block that time as a nicely done as Davis Miles had that block beautifully. I believe that was Mr. Domrez who got the block. He's gonna work his way out of the game and back in is the sophomore Jack Lynch who had a beautiful first half for St. Louis Park. Good production. Entry pass by Bilal, stolen away by Jack Lynch. So Bilal, a little upset with a teammate. Oh, and unfortunately for Lynch, he throws it wild, unfortunately, to his teammate Michael Howard, and that is going to cause the Spartans to, to get the ball back. So. so a turnover caused and a turnover made there by the sophomore. Lynch had seven in the first half for Park. We should mention, too, that Nick, Nick Chose with uh, six. Several players with three and four as well. Nice dribble drive penetration by Stone. Goes up twice again, rebound as well. So Stone with good penetration splits the D. Another split defensively, and then a wild throw out of town by Brown. And you can see why Junior Stone, the microwave as I like to call him, they call him the instant offense man with his nine and a half a game, but he was not able to finish that time. And even though he got two rebounds, wasn't able to finish there. Still 45-44, 11-15 remaining. Ray Whitlock using the left hand to create some space, goes the right hand off the glass. Nicely done on the tip back by Whitlock. And a nice job beautifully for St. Louis Park able to force the jump ball. And indeed, uh, excuse me, Josiah Morrow did a beautiful job forcing that. Morrow looking for Howard in the corner, nobody home here. And here's an entry pass almost stolen away by Bilal. Bilal has the Oriole player chose. Orioles work it on the exterior here. Lynch throws it over to Ray Whitlock. Ray's triple does not compute, but Jack Lynch with a tough aggressive rebound has it stolen away this time. And here's his, it's shot up court. Oh, and a nice job by Howard able to harass Brown. Now Brown has it stolen by Whitlock and we're off to the races for the Orioles. Brown looks a little hurt. Here's Howard from 15 from the foul line and it's good. Beautifully done as St. Louis Park executed. Michael Howard hits the double figure plateau for the Orioles. So pushes the lead back to three for St. Louis Park. It's a great game tonight. Here's Bilal, works it in down low. Several, a lot of hands as the Orioles pack it in defensively there. A lot of man to man. The Orioles sometimes zoning on a two three on occasionally as well. Belial Crosscourt, wow, almost threw that out of bounds indeed, but he does get it to Junior Stone. Junior seeing a lot of playing time today. Uses the left hand to try to create some space. Three-point attempt by the left-hander Belial. Nice board by Chose out to Howard here, and the Orioles are off and running. Howard operating the offense as he's done. Over to Ray Whitlock on the wing. 
Shows. Fake the turnaround and a trifecta by the sophomore, Josiah Morrow. The sophomore guard squared up beautifully and uses that good form that he has to bury the three. And what was a one point lead in Richfield at one point having the ball to possibly go ahead and has now been pushed back to a six point park lead. Here you see Howard there just letting the defensive players work by. Works the right hand dribble over to Whitlock who works it down low. Nice cross court entry pass and Morrow who was square from the three point line and you can see the fans at the top of the bleachers there already standing as Josiah launches the three. So yeah, as we mentioned uh, Wes Johnson, Jason Keller, Nick Chose are the senior leaders and three starters. Uh, you know, Chose averaging 12. And then of course the junior Whitlock averaging 17. Uh, Howard coming on strong averaging eight and Josiah Morrow averaging eight. Jeng five and Jack Lintz only averaging three, but he's really picked it up. And he's got, I believe he's in, if he's got nine already so far for St. Louis Park. So nice to see the youth movement. And five of the eight will return next year for St. Louis Park. Fallon getting inbound the ball here. A little discussion with Coach Breitenbucher on the bench and indeed he's gonna send, uh, the referee gonna send I'm going to send one of the players back to the bench. I believe that was 33. Jason Keller wasn't allowed entry into the game here, so we'll see what happens there. Stone. Maddox. Maddox right hand dribble, cross court pass to Shabazz. Shabazz over to. Shabazz worked it over to Fallon, and Fallon's three point attempt went awry. Oh, long cross court pass. And Richfield gonna steal that away, a possible three on two. Fallon goes with the right hand and he is able to beat right over the top, Tommy Fallon. I believe that was over number 43. Yes, I indeed it was, Jack Lynch there. And there you see the sequence where the ball is turned over. You'll see Lynch pursuing 43 there, goes high to try to get a, might have even got a small part of that ball as Howard went up for it as well. But just what the doctor ordered for Richfield as they get the two pointer. Fallon goes for the three-point play, gonna miss that. Nice board this time by Chose, up to Morrow. Morrow and Whitlock playing catch. Nice stop and go move by Whitlock. It goes left, right, and then he goes nicely off the glass, and you can see by Ray is averaging 18 a game. Wow, and there's a circus shot a la, a la Dr. J thrown by Shabazz that time, went nowhere. Didn't really have an angle as the Orioles defensively had a break there. And there you see the stop and go move by Ray Whitlock. Goes left, right. He would have had that probably blocked by Fallon, but a nice finish there by the by the junior. Orioles zone off the inbounds here. A pick set, creating some space. Four stone, 15 footer from the foul line. Oh, and a nice follow by Marques Brown. Unfortunately for the Orioles, Howard went up at the right time, but it was a Long board off the glass, and Mark Hess Brown was the beneficiary to cut it back to a four point lead. Playing catch, Lynch at top of the uh, three point line. Now working at the top of the key is Ray Whitlock over the wing to Howard. Whitlock being guarded by Antoine White. Work down to the baseline, 14 foot effort is beautifully driven home by the sophomore Jack Lynch. So Jack Lynch adds to his total, and I believe that's double figures for the sophomore. Fallon, right hand dribble drive, creates some across the free throw line extended area, and, and number 23, Antoine White wasn't able to finish. Here you see the sequence again, Howard over on the left wing, works it back to Whitlock, Whitlock over to Morrow, entry or side angle pass, and Jack Lynch was square, and Marques Brown really laid off of him from 15, so Jack used that soft shooting touch that he has. Just 7.50 to go here in this Metro West Conference game. Orioles up by six, trying to get their eighth win of the season. Nice entry pass to Brown. His Effort it goes hard off the glass, hard rebound that time. Howard, oh, and Orioles going to get a nice sequence here as Howard went up hard for the rebound, and so did Shabazz. Shabazz actually rolled out of bound, and it will be St. Louis Park ball up six with 7.40 remaining here. Nice effort by Brown, but he wasn't able to quite finish. 
and Howard seeing a ton of action for the Orioles. Nice fake by Chose, left hand dribble drive, and indeed Nick Chose, the senior leader at 6'4", goes to the left hand and indeed finishes strongly. Let's watch this replay again here. You see Chose flashing across the free throw line extended. He's able to get Shabazz up and with that duck under move, work it on the against the glass and net two for St. Louis Park. We'll see if Nick can take it a nine point lead and that's by far the biggest lead of the day. And Omar McMillan thinking about making a timeout or I guess he's gonna substitute back in here as indeed he brings back Davis Miles and indeed he brings Junior Stone back into the game. Here is Davis Miles gonna inbound it to Belisle here. Chaska, of course, leading the Metro West with a 7-0 record, followed by Jefferson at 6-1 and and Chanhassen. This is an important game if St. Louis Park can get their third conference win, pushing them to 3-5. And, and they pushed things out. What was a one-point advantage has now been shot out to uh, nine. So Coach McMillan calling a play in the corner, and a nice job as Howard makes another clean steal off the entry pass from Belial. He squared right in front of his man, and. Michael Howard with another beautiful play. Howard being trapped there, two-man game, and he's able to beat the pressure, work it over to Whitlock here. Whitlock goes cross-court to Morrow, who fakes the pass into the corner to Lynch, and they're just gonna work some time here up nine. No reason to take a bad shot. You've extended, you got a team a little on their heels. Nick Chose, backhand pass, and I believe we're gonna have an offensive foul. Could have almost went any way there, as Marquez Brown was almost underneath the basket but indeed it's gonna be wrestled on Ray Whitlock. Watch the sequence here. Nice give up from Chose here, boom. Whitlock with the left hand. Oh, I guess indeed he was square and he was a little farther out than I thought, so good call there. That's gonna be the third foul. First Oriole with three fouls is Wes Johnson, but he's gonna stay in the game for now with only six and a half remaining. No foul trouble for the Spartans. Shabazz. Beautiful drive on the weak side. And the follow that time is good by Davis Miles. And indeed, Davis Miles follows the miss by Junior Stone, who had created some nice dribble drive penetration on the right free throw line extended there. You see him goes from 14. Good board as he had excellent position inside here. And Dahmer is back in the game for Nick Chose. So we're gonna get some more rebounding back in the game here. Nice job by Nick. High fives extended all along the St. Louis Park bench. A line drive opportunity and a nice finish that time and that'll push it back to just a six point game. So another three point sequence there. And we'll see if Coach Brighton Buecher has the Orioles continue to run their aggressive offense. Throw to the baseline. Here's Jack Lynch from 12. Lynch is gonna miss that one. It'll break this time and here is, Mo and a give play and a nice drive down and that's 25 on the sequence or excuse me, 35, Marquise Brown got the pass from Belisle and hits there, so that puts him up to 10 for the game. Again, down to a four point game, Josiah Morrow misses the three pointer, Belisle arches high for the rebound, Morrow not gonna have any of that as he and his teammate Ray Whitlock are gonna force a jump ball and on the alternate possession rule, the ball's gonna go back to Richfield here, so. St. Louis Park getting going cold here the last three times down the court, we'll see if they can work it, they get the ball back on. And with a four point advantage, Park will inbound here. Morrow gets a screen, but he's not able to receive that cleanly. But the Orioles retain possession as it hit off a Richfield player. Howard at the top of the umbrella. Domre is right at the elbow. He's going to work it back out to Whitlock. Domre is flashing again at the elbow. Nice entry pass by Howard as he and Domre play catch. Yeah. Howard being harassed by Fallon, but just kind of token pressure. Belisle tries to pinch in on the, not able to do so. The Orioles continue to work clock here. A lot of trapping defenses. We're gonna see more for the Spartans. Oh, nice cross court entry from Howard and he finds the sophomore teammate Lynch. Beautifully done and nicely done by Jack Lynch to create some space off of a nice baseline move off of a, I think that was off of a, a small pick that was sent, so nicely done. And just what the doctor ordered for Park here. Antoine White to Belisle in the corner. Belisle with that quick first step goes left hand, and you can see why Mr. Belisle is being recruited. 
by Concordia St. Paul, University of St. Thomas for the senior Belisle. So, yeah. And also Nick Chose getting some looks from the D3 schools in town here, so. And there was Domres who's gonna miss and this might make it a four point advantage for the Orioles, but Belisle gonna walk it up again. He's being guarded by Lynch here. There's been a lot of switching defensively for both teams in the game. Orioles continue the switch. Flashing to the middle. Oh, unfortunately for St. Louis Park. Oh, we're gonna have a two shot foul that time as I believe a lot of arguing on the sideline there as 13 stone went towards the middle. He, he had his momentum stopped by Ray Whitlock. Watch here, here's the play before. You see the left-handed circus shot by Belial there. Here's Stone again, as he was bailed out. That was the fourth foul on the reach end for Ray Whitlock. And I think what Oriole fans and Coach Brighton were upset about, but they didn't think he was in the uh, shooting. Here's the cross court pass from Howard. Just they gave up on the defensive side of the ball and not good communication for the Spartans as Fallon gave up the, uh, the low baseline defensive space. And that free throw cuts it back to three. We're gonna have Wes Johnson enter the game and it'll spell Ray Whitlock for a minute. Ray with four fouls, probably just gonna sit for a minute here. Three point advantage, big pressure and a lot of trapping defensively. Inboard, inbound pass to Morrow. Orioles try to walk it up to the timeline here. Bilal gonna put pressure on Johnson, the senior, and the senior battling hard here. Morrow. Cross court over to Nick Chose from 18, just gonna stop it. Or is looking for a patient opportunity here. Get a good one, let's go. Howard, over to Morrow. Morrow looking for Domri's inside. Domri's trying to get some space on Brown and indeed they're battling interior there. Here's Wes Johnson again to Howard. Howard thought about it for a second. Still working it outside. Domri's gets a nice entry pass. Oh, and a beautiful entry pass by Josiah Morrow to Ryan Domri's there as the Orioles worked almost 45 seconds a clock. And here you see the, the last part of it is Chose gets it to Morrow who works it down to Domri's who gets the foul called on number three, Kershawn Lewis. And indeed that really helped the Orioles there. And he almost made a three point play of his own. So see if the Orioles can finish strong at the foul line here. And that's a miss. I mentioned Richfield on the year only shooting 52% from the free throw line. Um, the Orioles, the Orioles with quite a bit higher percentage, but I don't have the exact data updated. See if this is a big one. It can make it a two possession game with 3.30 remaining. Second one is good, pushing it to 60 to 56. So St. Louis Park, four point advantage here. Bilal gonna walk it up on Howard again here. Running baseline indeed is Stone and a drill. Oh, some penetration and a defensive foul on a block gonna be called on St. Louis Park's number three, Wes Johnson there, which is gonna send, I believe, number 12, Tommy Fallon to the free throw line. Here you see Fallon gonna get, the, gonna get the pass, go by Howard on the dribble drive here. And boy, maybe Wes's feet slightly moving, but a call that could have went either way, so. And here is Fallon, he hits his foul shot. If you're looking, if you're Dave Breitenbuecher and you're looking for some of the players to foul, you probably, the one you want to stay away from would be Xavius Shabazz at 70%, otherwise Brown and Fallon. And I just say that Fallon was only 44% on the year from the free throw line, but he cans two of them there. Brown gonna leave the game. And he's gonna be replaced by Miles Davis again, as well as Antoine White back in the game. Antoine's first game we mentioned. So trial under fire for 23, Antoine White, newly eligible in the second semester here. Howard dribble drive penetration, Morrow with a nice high arcing three, nobody home. And I think the Orioles might have a push foul. Oh, I, I apologize. Maybe I thought that, uh, excuse me, I thought that Nick Chose might have had a pushing sequence here, but indeed I was wrong. There you see the three point attempt. Indeed, was it on 25? Yes, indeed it was, as Mr. Davis gonna get whistled. Davis Miles get whistled with the foul. And say, it, while we have a quick timeout, if you do wanna get a copy of this game, and uh, hopefully it'll be an Oriole win, 
You can go to parktv.org for replay times. Also, Paul will have the game up on the St. Louis Park YouTube page. There's a great YouTube page the city runs. And you can also call that number any feedback about the broadcast, the announcing staff, or if you just want to compliment Kurt, who's a one-man wrecking crew on camera tonight by himself. And also wanted to make sure to mention Coach Brighton Bucher, of course, years and years as an assistant under at St. Louis Park and then the head coach at Park Center for five years before he took the park job from Larry Rongline in 2010. Dave teaches over at the middle school. He's got a big summer camp he wanted me to mention. So you young Oriole basketball fans out there, make sure you go to the gopark.org website, gopark.org. Coach Breitbucher has a two week summer camp, June 15th to June 26th he wanted me to mention. All kinds of uh, extra work done by a lot of his staffers, Coach Richardson involved as well. So take advantage of that to hone your game and learn, learn basketball the Oriole way. Howard. Just under three minutes here. Orioles clinging to a four point lead. But everybody's biting nails at this point. Morrow had some penetration from 12. Off balance shot, he's able to get his own rebound though. And he, his body was not square to the hoop on his initial shot attempt, but he did do a nice job following his, as you see here, he kind of shoots it sideways. But he does go over the head and nice right hand outstretched arm by Josiah Morrow. And he's gonna go to the foul line here. Parks next game at Jefferson, Tuesday, February 3rd. Tuesday, February 3rd, the Orioles take the show on the road. And another free throw miss, and that indeed could be the, uh, not sure. A little confusion over at the scorer's table. Moral with some nice form and arc, but unfortunately misses both of them, and Belial will try to work it down as they cut, try to cut into the four point lead here with just over two and a half minutes remaining here. Howard is still on Belial here, top of the circle. Entry pass, and Domres with great hands on Brown, and beautiful work by Dian Ryan Domres, the sophomore center. We, Ryan, you know, just really great effort that time. And he was able to tie up Brown. Alternate possession rule goes back to Richfield, but if Park can get another tie up, then the ball will go back to them. So Ryan, we didn't really mention, but Ryan averaged in 10 a game as a sophomore at 6'3". And we mentioned all him and Lynch as sophomores, as well as Howard. Aaron Jang will be back next year. We haven't seen a lot of him today, but top of the key, Fallon here. Tried to create some space. Was Bilal, who had a partial screen set at the free throw line extended here. 17 foot fall back, fade away two shot attempt there. Nobody home as there was a no go by Antoine White. And as we go under two minutes, the Orioles gonna be content probably to work some clock here. Spartans are gonna continue to probably do some trapping. Park has you know, four or five really good ball handlers in there. Here is Wes Johnson, the senior. Works it over to Mr. Excuse me, works it over to Ray Whitlock. Ray had that one almost stolen, but a, a and that's good sportsmanship. Belial and Howard going at it. Ray's pass over to Howard. Almost was stolen there, but Belial gonna get called for the push. I believe right there, or maybe even a left hand to the face. Maybe a Muhammad Ali moment as he made some contact with the face. He's fine though. Orioles can enter, side entry pass goes to Whitlock here. 135 remaining indeed. This is Metro West Conference basketball. As you can see there, Richfield the only team in the bonus here with eight fouls. So Orioles gotta be cognizant of fouling the Spartans. Still gonna work at cross court. Orioles content just to hold the ball and really make quality passes. Quick short passes on the exterior. Here's Nick Chose back to Whitlock. Whitlock gonna be trapped over here. Fallon tries to slap at it from behind, but Whitlock gonna take it back as he and Wes Johnson cross court diagonal to Nick Chose. And then that diagonal pass to Chose and the finish. So patience, patience, patience personified. And indeed the cross court diagonal pass. You take a look at this beautiful vision here. Beautiful vision, he goes right hand over the top and Nick Chose works the baseline to create some space. Puts it out to a six point league and this will make it seven if, if the senior Chose can finish here. You mentioned Nick averaging 12 a game. 
Having some opportunities in his future, possibly to continue his basketball career. We'll see what works of that. And that finish is gonna make it a seven point lead. So Orioles really worked, you know, a minute and 30 seconds off the clock. We're able to utilize a break and then still get the, still get a nice sequence where they ended up with a three point play here. Belisle with only 55 remaining to, to Brown. As Brown at the elbow extended and that ball gonna hit off the foot of Mr. Belisle who's upset with himself. And it's gonna be a seven point lead It almost must foul time if you're Omar McMillan and the Richfield coaching staff here. Howard gonna get the ball. Him and Wes Johnson gonna try to walk it up. Wes trying to get to the timeline. Not able to do so, and a nice step up by Fallon who steals it away. Good, but it's, Fallon has it stolen back by Nick Jose, or excuse me, Ryan Domris with the steal back. So even though Fallon had made a nice play on the initial steal, as you watch here, boom. Nice steal there, but watch what happens here. As you see, Mr. Domris with great hands, so beautifully done. And Ryan, as we mentioned, the sophomore contingent really making some nice plays. You're going to have, it looks like you're going to have Ray Whitlock trying to add to his point total, the junior Whitlock. And I know Ray has really been a, a great, is a great work ethic, and Coach Brighton Buecher really happy with his improvement. He's been involved with the Real Athletics AAU program in the summer and fall and just made great strides, mentoring a lot of the younger players. He misses there, and the Orioles were in the one and one, so seven point lead. Richfield still with an opportunity, 33 seconds. Belisle just trying to create some space on a dribble drive here, but he's being pinched down on and a nice play by Howard on a quick steal. Michael Howard gonna go with the left hand and he finishes beautifully, and that should ice it with nine, nine point lead, and Michael Howard beautifully done as he causes another turnover. And that'll just about do it for Park. We'll see if the Spartans continue, but you're gonna have another win. You're gonna have another victory in the column of St. Louis Park as the Orioles up nine, and I don't know if we have that sequence, but Howard does a beautiful job on Belisle to force a steal there, and he was getting some help on the trap sequence, and that'll push it to nine here, so. And we have some entertaining music by Picked over there. Watch the sequence here. I believe that's Nick Chose helping out, and indeed it's just like maybe Bilal just kind of slipped there, but this is a nice sequence to see him go to the left hand and finish and use that right arm extended to make sure he created enough space to get it off the glass and the finish. And another quick announcement is that both teams in the bonus, St. Louis Park does get the ball on the alternate possession if there is a tie-up, so in only 10 seconds remaining, Orioles gonna get their eighth win of the season and third in the conference, as I mentioned, they're at Jefferson on Tuesday, and then next Friday, February 6th, the Kennedy Eagles come here in what should be a really competitive game, Friday, February 6th, and then the rematch. Mark this one on your calendars. Tuesday, February 10th, St. Louis Park defeated Benilde in overtime two weeks ago here at the high school. The rematch, Tuesday, February 10th, St. Louis Park at Benilde. You know the Red Knights will try to get some revenge as they try to work their way up the conference standings too. And then Cooper's here on Friday, February 13th. Orioles just gonna inbound, still good pressure. They're not gonna give up. And how we're gonna get it sent to the line here as a foul is called there. I believe that was on number 23, Antoine White, whistled for the personal, so. We should mention here, I haven't had a chance to reflect on this, but Champlin Park still leading the Class 4A rankings with a beautiful 19-0 record. Number two is Apple Valley at 18-1, and, and in Class 3A, De La Salle, 12-2, and, and St. Paul Johnson, 14-3. Tomorrow, great matchup as De La Salle and fourth-ranked Armstrong in Class 4A are gonna meet in what's called the Game of the Week. I believe De La Salle has three D1 recruits on their team. You get a chance to see De La Salle or, of course, Apple Valley. And nice job by Michael Howard as he finishes there. Another finish. Nope. Going to miss there. So just nine and a half remaining. Ten-point lead. Three-point effort and another three, third three-pointer of the game, I believe, by Junior Stone, who... Seems to have the range for Coach McMillan. Um, 
going into the game, I really thought the St. Louis Park had a big advantage on the free throw line. They had some height advantage. And I've been just really, really impressed with, obviously I've, I've seen Ray Whitlock several times and been very impressed by the youth of St. Louis Park as well as the senior leadership. And I can now understand why the information I got from Coach Breitenbuecher was so positive about how the kids have improved as the season's gone on. And even though they have had a couple losses that were a little on the awkward side, um, they have played some good competition, including Armstrong and Edina. And you can bet that uh, it was also nice to see Tommy Burnett, who is a senior who I had not seen play before. And of course, I didn't know who that was initially. So he got some minutes here. So for Richfield, they're going to move to 2 and 18 on the season and 0 and 8 in the conference. And, and Coach McMillan will continue to try to make some adjustments as he has started 12 different players. And he'll have to continue with that. He, of course, is a, a teacher in the Richfield district, so he has, hopefully, the ability to work down with the youth program. That's so helpful with, the Orioles are fortunate to have Coach Brighton Buecher in basketball as a coach or a teacher in the middle school, as well as. Good finish there by Michael, as well as I was gonna say, Charlie McChesney, the girls hockey coach, works in there. At El Al Wahutka, the softball coach. Of course, Tim Donahue coached for a long time. Anytime you've got the, the coaches as a teaching staff in the school, chance to really get to know the kids they have as well. Talk to them and two more points on the total and that'll push it officially back up to seven points here with just one to go. And a three point attempt goes awry by Belisle and all smiles over in the Oriole bench and in the Oriole faithful happy as St. Louis Park gets another win, building off Wednesday night's impressive decision over the South St. Paul Packers, the Orioles get a seven-point win over Richfield and push their record on the season to 8-12. and 12. Once again, the Orioles at Jefferson on Tuesday night, February 3rd, and then home next Friday against Bloomington Kennedy. I believe they still have three home games remaining before sections. And if you have any questions on any of the upcoming Oriole events, as the team continue to shake hands, go to gopark.org, or if you want to get a copy of this game, $10 for a DVD if you order three or more. You can have it forever. And you can also call Paul at that number with any feedback on the game, any comments, etc. Happy to be able to bring you these games. And the Orioles finished the second night in a row of games against Richfield. Hockey team wins big last night. Boys basketball team with a win tonight. All things are good in Oriole country and Coach Brighton Buecher with a smile. And what's not to smile about? Oriole 68, Spartan 61. On behalf of Kurt, our crack cameraman, Paul Broden, our director, this is John Fromm saying good night from Oriole country. <laughs> <laughs>